Alright, hey guys, Rick Bigger uh, here with another video for the 13th Man. Um, we we're talking about tactical medicine today. I had a question asked a couple days ago from my buddy Shep Fuller. He was asking about on Facebook about a uh, tactical medic pouch and whether people thought it was a good one, what he should get to replace his IFAC. Your IFAC, your, uh, for the layman's term, is Individual First Aid Kit. It's an acronym from the military. They came out with this. So, IFACs are super popular, especially police officers. They wear them. Uh, they're also really expensive, and a lot of guys want to build their own. So, uh, for those who don't know, uh, I'm a paramedic. Uh, that's really probably more as much as anything else. My area of expertise is uh, medicine, especially or paramedicine, especially trauma. Um, so for me, what would I carry? I wore an IPAC, or excuse me, an IFAC whenever I was in the Marine Corps, obviously. Uh, but what do I use now? What I think is most important to carry? That was kind of the question. So I told him that, you know, that for me, there's only a few things that you really need. The majority of stuff that's in the IFAC is actually useless. Um, and most of these tactical pouches that you buy, you're paying hundreds of dollars for, uh, for a, a pouch that you really don't need. So obviously, uh, the number one new thing that's came out that everyone wants is a tourniquet, especially if you're an officer or you're in a um, military personnel or something like that. Somewhere where gunshot wounds are prevalent. So the most common one is the basic one here. Uh, cat tourniquet, almost everybody knows what this is. It's got the plastic windlass on it. It's got the holders. You can put this on yourself. Uh, this is super effective. Stops uh, a lot of stuff. So most people say this is the most important thing. I disagree with that. But Cat makes a great one. I don't know who actually makes these. I don't remember. A lot of people make them, but the design's called Cat, and uh, very good tourniquet. Very useful. Commonly considered the most important thing that somebody should have in their in their uh, first aid kit. I would agree it's up there, but definitely not the most important. And the reason is because this only treats one thing. This treats arterial bleeding to an extremity. So gunshot, knife wound, really bad car wreck, uh, really bad trauma to an extremity. Arms or legs, basically. Obviously our extremities that we can use this on. You can't put this around your neck. That's counterproductive, but um, super effective when you need it. Everybody should have one of these, uh, but this uh, would not be the first thing that I bought if I was on a budget. But make sure you do have one of these. So your, your every IFAC that you buy is going to have one of those in it. This would be the number one thing because it's tactical to have one. But uh, like I said, it's it's a great tool, but it's limited in its use. So what's the most important to me? Thing if I was going to put anything in a kit. So basically, what my kit consists of is roller gauze big fat kind not stretch bandage roller gauze very thick this is just gauze you can buy this at uh, CVS or uh, Walgreens any place buy this at Walmart awesome it's very cheap this roll costs like a dollar two of these are here together it's down for a second an ace bandage right here this is a they come in Brazilian sizes and length the wider the better um, they're very stretchy these make a great bandage. They're very cheap as well, a couple dollars. A pair of shears is important. It's going to be really hard to get the person's clothes off to uh, to actually treat the wound and see what's actually happening if you don't have a pair of shears. If you carry a knife, a good strong pocket knife, you can use that. It's not as great as these. These are super cheap, cost a couple dollars as well. You can buy safety scissors. They're the same thing. You can buy these. On Amazon for a couple bucks. I have a. I don't use this particular kind. I use a brand called X Shear. They're about $40, uh, but that's because I'm a medic and I use them all the time. If you're a regular person or just an officer, operator, or whatever, uh, regular civilian, you only need these because you're probably only going to use them once and you can throw them away and you're done. And then the cat that we already talked about. Those, that's it for me. That's all you need. Even in the back of the ambulance, we have an entire trauma bin that has everything you can possibly think of and those things that I showed you are generally almost every time 
what I use. Uh, those are the most common things. The most versatile of all of them is this roller gauze right here. This can be used in a variety of ways. Your, your standard IFAC is going to have multiple different sizes of bandages. I can make that in about one second. That's a 4x4 right there. All right. I need two 4x4s. That's two 4x4s. I need a huge trauma bandage. I just made a large trauma bandage right there, just a couple of seconds. That does that for me. I can apply that. I can cut that or I can tear it with my hands. The shears cut it really quick. I can rip it with my hands too. I'm not going to do that because I want to reuse this for training. But I can cut that right there. I just tear it straight in half. And I can make another one of those and another one of those and another one of those. And I can layer it on. So I can do that. This rolls up easily. You're talking about gunshot wounds. Why is this more versatile than the than the uh, tourniquet. The tourniquet's great. We want to use it when it's needed. This is a large amount of bandage in one. This is a lot, <clears throat> a lot of gauze. And it's got a little bit of space in between it, which makes it even bigger. So even if I, if I have a gunshot wound, I can apply this directly to it. If I need more than that for larger exit wounds, I can double them up together. This, so the way platelets work and the way we stop blood with direct pressure, right? Our most important tool to stop blood loss is direct pressure. This right here makes a huge bandage to be able to place directly onto a wound. That covers a large surface area. If it's a huge wound or even an avulsion from a wreck or literally a torn limb is torn off, this can go inside the hole and I can stuff it, much like we use combat gauze for, uh, which is why I think these are still better than combat gauze. Combat gauze is awesome, but also very limited. These are very versatile. So we're talking about a small pack, a very small pouch that I can fit these things inside. It doesn't take a whole lot of room right there. Any little pouch these things goes in. If, if two is too much, I can switch it down to one. That takes very limited space. I can treat almost everything that's reasonable for a person with basic level of training to treat can be treated with that. Even as a uh, paramedic, this is normally what I'm going to use. When you combine these together, uh, back to the, the way platelets work with all this gauze and all the spacing. Platelets come out of your body and they get trapped, right? Same thing when you push down when you have a cut on your hand. They get trapped and they start to clot. This gauze right here with this webbing creates an excellent place for them to get trapped inside of. It really helps with the clotting process. So we have two of these together. That's an outstanding bandage. I can put a ton of pressure on that and I can that is a, a huge amount of dressing to be on top of the wound, so it stops bleeding very effectively. The trick we used to use in the Marine Corps, take two of these, put them together just as you see them, not wrapped up. I know it's not sterile, and I'm just going to tell you that's really bad, but if I'm shot on the side of the road, I don't care if it's sterile, please stop me from bleeding to death. I'm not worried about the infection I'll get. They can treat that later. Uh, but we would tape these together, one single roll of tape, and hold these like that. And then you can put this, and this is the first thing that comes out of your pouch. It goes directly on the wound right away. It's super fast. Um, anybody can do it. A lay person that just normally would use their shirt or something could pull this out. Or if you had this pack and you drove up on a car wreck, you could pull this out. And just apply pressure to the worst wound that you see. You can wrap extremities with this. Very versatile. This cannot be replaced. You can never replace a good bandage in direct pressure. Okay. So the cat tourniquet is the best tourniquet on the market, in my opinion. It's the most, been the most tested, used overseas for years, been used hundreds, if not thousands of times, and uh, it's, it's very effective, extremely effective. It will save your life. But I can create a pretty good tourniquet with a lot of different things. One of those is the ace bandage. It doesn't work as well as the cat tourniquet, but it, it is very effective. If you're familiar with the SWAT tourniquet, which is essentially an ace bandage that's made out of plastic, um, or rubber, excuse me, made out of rubber. That's what a SWAT tourniquet is. It's basically an ace bandage that's rubber. These can create a tourniquet too. Um, I could create it with this if I wrapped it tight enough, but it wouldn't be that effective. I could use a belt to create that. I could use a shirt to create that. All those things can create a, a pretty good tourniquet. Nothing can replace an outstanding dressing that can pack wounds, treat everything from scratch, to a ripped off limb. So this is why I think this is the best tool there is. These two used in combination, if I couldn't take anything else, 
I would get rid of these two first, and I would keep these two. I'm going to have my wife, Aubrey's going to come over here, and I'm going to kind of demonstrate why. We're talking about pressure. This can make an outstanding dressing to hold the pressure on, and I can apply an extreme amount of pressure with this. And in my opinion, these are the best bandage made out there. I use them every day. She's going to sit down here and let me use her arm. So we're imagining that she has a wound on her arm here. Let's say that whatever, gun, gunshot wound, knife wound, whatever, it doesn't matter. So a huge amount of wound. So I take the bandage right away and I apply a ton of pressure and I can squeeze this and, and get the clotting process started and I can hold that there with my hand. If I have somebody helping me, they can hold that for me. This next set here, if that bleeds through immediately, I can put that right on there too and that is a lot of bandage right there as you can see to get all the way through. Probably four inches thick of bandage. If that doesn't bleed through, I can use this to wrap and I can start applying a lot of pressure right away as I wrap this. Now my, my bandage is being held in place now. I'm wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping here. I can just wrap away and I don't need any cool tape. This can just be tucked in here. That's a great bandage. It's a lot, huge amount. It's got a decent amount of pressure on there. You can see from her veins popping up here. Pretty good pressure mm -hmm. on there. All right, veins are already popping up. So my ACE bandage comes into play. I'm going to create essentially what is an Israeli bandage if you're familiar with those. So this has a lot of elasticity to it, which is great. So now I go right where that wound is again, and I get a wrap started. Hey, let's say I get to this point and my bandage starts bleeding through. I can pull this extremely tight and put an absolutely insane amount of pressure on top of this wound. To the point to where, as you can see already, you can see this on her hand here where her her veins are popping out of her hand. Okay, her fingers are going to start turning purple here pretty soon. I'm literally creating a tourniquet directly on top of that wound, but I'm putting a ton of pressure directly down. And I can wrap this wound here. Keep wrapping. I lose it. It's fine. Tons of pressure. Pressure stops bleeding. Tuck this in here. That's extremely tight. Her hand probably hurts. I can't feel a radio pulse in her hand. So normally addressing this is way too tight. I did this on purpose. Okay, she's probably going to lose feeling pretty soon. But if her arm, she was bleeding to death, that would stop that. Absolutely, two to three inches of dressing. Great, great roller gauze dressing. Huge H bandage. This goes to the hospital well. I'm going to let this off so her hand doesn't turn blue. This goes to the hospital well. It travels well. She can get up and walk for me now. I can put a ton of bandage. Eight band ace bandage, absolutely awesome. Um, is that loose enough for you? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely awesome way to treat wounds. Great uh, tool in a trauma pack uh, that a lot of people don't teach. So you can recreate this. Some people, I don't agree with them. Some people, especially older school people, they love Coban. So this is a roll of Coban right here. They love this stuff. It's a stretchy bandage too. Okay. And it does work pretty good. And if you've ever put this on someone for my medics and EMP friends out there, you can make this way too tight. And this is a good tool. It's a little stickier, so some people like it better than Spanish, but I can't get as much pressure with it. If I pull on this real hard, it'll break. That's what I don't like about it. Um, but it is a good bandage as well. So some people substitute the Ace bandage for the Coban. I don't think it's as effective. They make better Coban. Good luck getting it. Um, but most ambulance services don't use it anymore. I guess it costs too much money, but this stuff's kind of junky. And uh, you can buy uh, you can buy this at Walgreens as well. This makes a good tool, but I don't think it's a great one. Not a big fan of it. You can create also what I do with a roll of uh, three inch tape. All right. I can put this tape on there to hold that in place and I can pull this super tight. This doesn't stretch at all, so I don't like it as well. Sometimes it's hard to tear, okay? Biggest thing for me is this. This is what happens when you pull a lot of it out. Now it's really stuck to me. And now this piece is destroyed. 
Some people are experts at this, using this tape. I am not. I hate this tape with an absolute passion. But this is a good tool. It's a three inch tape. Still think the Ace Bandage is better, hands down, because it can do way more. This has way more limitations. This does not absorb blood very well at all. That will. And if you don't leave a tail on your tape, you end up doing this, trying to get this apart. So I'm not a big fan of the three inch tape. Some people are, so just to, it's another thing that's out there that you could put in there, but I don't like this as much. So, kind of in recap there, roll of gauze, a couple rolls of it, ace bandage, cat tourniquets are, cat tourniquets are great. Pair of shears, make sure you got some shears in there. So Shep, there's your answer for me. You asked me, I already answered you on Facebook, that'll make a video. Pair of shears, a couple rolls of roller gauze, the ace manager and the cat tourniquet. And that is, uh, to me, that's all you need. Um, you're gonna see some other stuff in there right away. If you buy a set, you're gonna get nasal airway. I've never put one in. I don't really believe in them. You can pretty much throw that away. People use them. If you're not gonna use a BVM, and bag the person. To me, there's not that much use for them. You can clear somebody's airway out uh, pretty effectively. If you don't have a way to ventilate them, the airway's not that effective anyway. Usually by the time that people get there that have BVMs and ventilate, they got a lot of other tools that are a whole lot better than a nasal airway, so you can throw that in the trash. Uh, small bandages, I can recreate those with my roller gauze. Uh, quick clot, that's a popular one. Combat gauze, it's, it's super expensive and it does work well when it's needed, but the roller gauze can do essentially what it can do if you uh, put enough of it in there. Um, I just don't think it's worth the money. So if you got a big budget, buy all that extra stuff, buy you a cool little tactical kit, and you'll have all that stuff in there. But to me, I like to save the money, spend it on something else. I just use those things. So that's my spiel on uh, that's my spiel on uh, my tactical medic kit. Oh, excuse me. Mm. What's the spill on the tactical medic kit? Yeah, so that's uh, the what else we got going on? Upcoming events I can cover real quick in the end here. Uh, what's the 13th man been doing? We got the trip in Arkansas coming up in a couple weeks. Planning's pretty much done for it. Got technical difficulties uh, with my truck on that. So once that's taken care of, we'll be off to that. It's going to be a lot of cool footage. We're going to do uh, 15 miles of hiking in two days. Uh, a lot of repellent, so we'll have some great footage from that. Uh, we've got a new seminar coming up, new series called Surviving Violence. It'll be coming out starting August. Don't have the exact day. Once I do, you'll have it. But there'll be an event made. So guys are wanting, uh, guys and gals that are wanting some more training. If you guys came to the Self Defense 101 or saw went to one of the refusing, refusing to be a victim seminars, this will be uh, much more techniques. We'll have talk portion again, like always. Talk about. Ways to identify threats, get way more in detail than what we did before, and then how to deal with it once it's a face to face attack. It'd be a multiple uh, series of these, probably five or six, all the way from very basic ways to take on somebody with unhands, with your open hands, and then all the way to gun knife disarms. Already shot some footage on that the other day, uh, creating some videos. Um, Corey lets in. Uh, new owner over at CrossFit Owasso. He's been working on some videos for me, so we got most of those done. We got the intro for our podcast done. So that'd be really cool. Next time we have a, a video, I should have the introduction video. It's going to be really cool. Uh, just finished our logo up. Made a decision. Going with the spade and the 13. So, I'll recut some vinyl. Maybe a new cup. Respect the choke. For Chad Brooks, I want a shirt. Got the cup done. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get the shirts done pretty soon. Uh, I think that's it. I think we all that's all we got for now. So thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, see you guys later.